everyone and welcome to episode 10 of the Cookie Knits podcast. My name is Ira and I'm your host here. I am originally from Kathmandu, Nepal, but I'm coming to you from beautiful Sydney, Australia, which has been home for more than a decade. I think it's coming up to like 12 years that I've been here actually. So um, yeah, <laughs> I'm a Sydney sido now. Um, <laughs> I'm mostly a knitter. I also cross stitch and I occasionally dabble in other crafts and um, this is a special occasion for me as it's episode 10 which means I've done 10 of these so I would like to thank you all for watching and keeping up um, with me and my crafting endeavors. <laughs> if it's your first time here welcome. Um, I'm also available on Ravelry and Instagram as Cookie Knits if you want to keep up to date with my content and of course you can always subscribe to this channel um, I'll be hopefully making a few more videos towards the end of the year regarding my favorite makes of the year, what I want to make next year, maybe a vlogmas, I don't know, I don't really, I'm not, I don't really celebrate Christmas, but we do celebrate at my in-laws place, um, so I don't know how much footage I can get because obviously I don't want to interrupt their privacy <laughs> just because I have a YouTube channel, so maybe, maybe something, let's see. Uh, before we get started, I just want to let you know that the giveaway winner has been in contact with me and the post and the parcel has been posted out to her. So thank you everyone for um, taking part in the giveaway. I really enjoyed reading all the comments with helicopter and you guys are so creative. Some of the comments like just flew over my head as well, like I'm not smart enough. <laughs> But um, the reason I chose the word helicopter was um, it actually wasn't the first word that popped into my head. The first word that popped into my head was pineapple, which um, apparently is what swingers use as a code word. So I was like, oh, let's not use that one. <laughs> and then um, helicopter was the next word that popped in. And um, I think it was because it's a family joke uh, when my <laughs> this, this one time my stepmom like she was really sleepy and i think a helicopter had just gone past and she was trying to tell us to switch off the heater but she kept saying can you switch off the helicopter and we were like what and she's like can you switch off the helicopter so for a few years in the middle me and my younger sister used to just call random things in the house helicopter <laughs> so i think that's why that popped in anyways um that was really fun i'll try and do more giveaways in the future um, okay, let's get started with the episode. Um, since the MCAL is all done and my knitting mojo is back with a vengeance, I've managed to clear a few things off my needles, which is really exciting, and also started a few whips for myself, which is also very exciting. Um, I don't really do a lot of Christmas gift knits. Um, I think the one that I spoke about last time, the friend miss thing, is the only thing that I really do, mostly because it's really hot here so Christmas is like not even the time I like to knit too, with too much wool um, but also I just like to knit for my partner pretty much um, and I knit for him any time of the year so no problem uh, let's get started so my first finished no nope, let's get started with what I'm wearing I know it's, I think it's a bit crumpled but this is my cumulus tee by petite knit and this is knit in the four ply undyed um, merino, 100% merino yarn with, oh wow, I can't believe I've forgotten, I said it only about 40 times when I was knitting it, with a multicolored nep. It's like an undyed um, yarn base that dyers use, but I bought mine in the undyed cream color and I got it from Fiber Arts Shed and I will link all of that details down below. Um, so the cumulus tee is just a touch too short. I should probably lengthen it, but I probably won't. Um, so that's that. <laughs> I'll just make another one and make it longer. Um, okay, what was I saying? First finished object. So the first thing I finished is my cute little kitchen towel. This is the Colorfield hand towel, uh, which is a free pattern by Pearl Soho, and it's knit in linen stitch. And I've used Dapper Dream uh, cotton, which is cones of cotton from a store in Manila, in Philippines, in two colors, ivory and sage. So I chose to do, I think this is about a 40 by 60 centimeter towel, um, 
yeah, so this one's about 40 and the original pattern is written for um, sport weight yarn with 130 something stitches but I altered it and I did it in a worsted weight yarn on a 5.5 millimeter needle and I think I have about 88 or 87 stitches. All of the details are available on my Ravelry page. So I just knit the one color till it was about 10 centimeters. And then I knit the two color till it was about 40 and then the last bit in a 10 which makes a really nice sized um, dish towel, kitchen towel. Basically a small hand towel we use in the kitchen. <laughs> we don't actually use it to wipe any dishes. So that's all done. I really, really am happy with it. Um, it, barely, it did not use as much yarn as I thought it would. In the, the green, I think I used like 35 grams of worsted weight cotton. Um, I didn't accurately weigh the cone before I started. It does say approximately 400 grams, so maybe it had a bit more. And then the white, I used about 160 grams, which means I didn't even fully use half of the cone. And I have four cones in total. And if I make the green the main color, and you know, like switch them around, I think I should be able to get eight or 10 towels easily. So that's all done. Um, is it going to dry? I don't know. Is um, anyone ever going to get to use this? Also probably not because I don't want this to get ruined. It's so nice. It's so thick and so luscious. I just want I just want it to like sit on my oven and look pretty and then all of its brothers and sisters will join and there'll just be a full rail of pretty towels that no one's allowed to use. <laughs> the color field, hand towels. First off hopefully many. Then my next finished object is the Secret Santa present that I was making, which is all done. This is also a free pattern from Pearl Soho. It's called the Color Block Hand Mittens or the Striped, sorry, Color Block Hand Warmers or the Striped Hand Warmers. It's just a very simple, straightforward um, hand warmer. The original pattern goes down to about here, but I altered that as, you know, most by the time anyone in Sydney is wearing this, they're going to be in a sweater and a jacket. It doesn't make sense to have to fight with sleeves for hand warmer space. So I did shorten it to be about this length. And it was a really fast, really easy knit. It's just a, there's no right or wrong side. The thumb gusset is just on the side. Um, so you can wear it either way. I'm, I'm really happy with this. Um, so it's knit from the bottom up with first a few rows of ribbing, then stockinette in the round. And then for the thumb hole, you just knit stockinette back and forth instead of in the round, and then you join up in the round. And then in the end, you just pick up around the thumb hole here and just do a couple of rows of ribbing and bind off. So super simple, super um, useful gift knit. Um, if it was for me, obviously I would have probably liked a bit more thumb shaping and probably um, in like a ribbing or more fitted with increases. But you know, I have realized mittens and gloves, um, just like small sleeves and I assume socks, but I don't really knit them, um, is not my favorite type of knitting. So if I'm going to find a way to make it slightly easier, I will. Oh, I forgot to say what yarn I used. I used the Nundle Chaffee 4 ply in the colorway Berry and it's 100% Superwash Merino. I really like the yarn. It's not, um, it's not like the super soft 100% Merinos. It's still beautifully soft, but I like that it has a bit of body to it, which when you're knitting, it's not as loose. It has a bit of structure. So I, I quite like the yarn. Um, it was quite short in yardage though. I had a 50 gram ball. Well, I have two, but I only used up one. I still have a little bit left of the one actually. Um, and I think it, it was about 135 meters to 50 gram. Whereas usually it's more closer to like, I don't know, 180 to two something. So it's a nice, robust, bouncy yarn. Peekaboo. Why did I do that? <laughs> okay. And then my last finished object 
is the baby blanket that I have had on the needles forever. The baby is almost here and I was still knitting on it, but it's done now. So it's this size. I could have knitted longer, but I won't lie, I was over it. I'm picturing it more as like a pram cover, I guess. This is the pattern called Jack and Jill's blank Jack and Jill blanket, which is also a free pattern by Mariana Mel, who is the Lazy Daisy Days um, blog, as well as of course the pattern store on Ravelry. Um, and I knit this in the Bendigo Woolen Mills 8 ply cotton in the colorway Peacock. And it's really nice and soft. It was a relatively tedious knit. I should have just done something in Gata, which is now I'm realizing when I'm knitting blankets in flat Gata or stockinette in the round, but with, a, with the cast on in the middle so that you're actually knitting the blanket out or mitered square, something like that would be more interesting to me um, because I really do knit, I really did knit on this as a you know, train, knit groups, hanging out with people chat and I realized I kept making mistakes on the wrong side with the broken rib pattern because I would keep getting the purl and the knit sequence wrong and it's just not something that was interesting me to knit at home where I would actually be paying attention it was a bit of a struggle. I had to I had to correct it a few times, but it's all done now. Um, none of these three finished objects have been blocked. So when this does block, I'm going to try and it's quite stretchy. So I'm going to try and get a little bit more width in it. Um, but it's really nice. I really like the cotton. I think I think I would be happy to use this again for a baby blanket. The cotton, not the probably not the pattern. Though never say never. It's just been a few couple of weird months for me knitting wise so my mojo has been up and down it's probably not even the blanket it's probably just me so those are my three finished um objects yay i still have a couple of whips from before the mcal on my needles but these were the sort of easy uh projects that i wanted to get off Yay, so productive of me. Uh, okay. Maybe I'll put it here. And moving on to my works in progress. I'm actually really excited about these. So my first work in progress is the um, Poetry Pullover by Sari Nordland. You guys have seen this before. When I was like about here, and I remember me saying, oh, it's only a little bit left till I get to finish the yoke. No, no, there was a lot left. Um, I felt like I had to knit on it forever. However, something's clicked with me in the full lace again. I'm not finding it as tedious. I'm really enjoying the process. As you can see, I've divided for the sleeve. I'm a significant way through the body. And the lace looks beautiful. So hopefully I'll get this done. I cannot wait. Like, can you imagine when this is all blocked? Oh, it's going to be beautiful. I am knitting this in the Bendigo Woolen, Woolen Mills Tweed 8 Ply in the colorway Old Rose. And this is a discontinued yarn. It's mostly wool with a touch of viscose, which is why it has this beautiful sheen. And it has some acrylic nips through it in about in like quite nudie brown colors. So it's quite a subtle, quite a subtle tweed, I would say. The one thing is I haven't tried this on yet. <laughs> um, but it'll be fine. Like it's lace, it'll open up with blocking. I will eventually try it on. I just haven't yet because I've just been knitting on it. My next work in progress is the test knit for Vera uh, from Vera Loves Knitting. I'll link her Ravelry page down below. Um, and this is so fun. Uh, the sweater is called the SEO Trot, which is a reference from Road Dahl. Um, I was a massive Road Dahl uh, book reader growing up, but this happened to be the one I didn't read. So when Vera was like, oh, you don't know that one. I was like, no, I don't. What the heck? 
Um, I'm using the Cascade 220 fingering weight in the colorway series, which is what I want to be when I grow up, this color. Can you believe how beautiful this is? Oh my gosh. I'm pairing it with the Drops um, Kid Silk Mohair in the colorway pink. Um, I thought I had a really good color match. However, the Drops Mohair is doing that thing where it has a lot of like white in the actual silk. I don't know how to describe it to you guys, but from close up, it literally looks like the silk is undyed and only the mohair has been dyed and it's spun into it. So I am slightly bummed out by that because I really wanted like a fluffy hot pink sweater. That's all right. I actually still quite like the um, fabric I'm getting. It's just not what I had originally wanted, but I can still love it. So this is what it's looking like. So you can see there's still quite a little bit of the white showing through in the mohair, but that's okay. So the SEO Trot is a bottom up um, sweater. It has a split hem, which is where this is. This is the back in twisted rib. And I've just, just last night, cast on the front <laughs> hem. And then once you're done with the front hem, you join them two together and then it, um, then you knit up. I'll try and pop in a picture of what the pattern will look like. I think it's so stunning. I love like how Vera uses texture and like almost geometric. This like, it's like a geometric, reminding me of armor in a way, the side ones, but I love it. As soon as I saw her knit, I think she knit the first version for her daughter and I watched her knit it and I was like, um... Are you writing a pattern? Are you? Because please do. So, yay! I'm test knitting it. The SEO Trot. I'm very excited. I love this color. I think I'm going to knit a few more hot pink things. It makes me so happy. So, I'll keep you guys updated with my progress as well as when the pattern comes out. The SEO Trot by Vera Marku. And then my last cast on, um, my last work in pro, pro, how is this happening every time? Work in progress <laughs> is the felt spa tee by Hannah, the lovely Hannah from Hannah Herb Garden, Herb Garden Knitwear. Yep, that's where I am. There was an, uh, there was another pattern that I needed to cast on, but I just wanted something that was like a comforting knit, like something that was relatively easy for my skill level and was for me and a decent sized needles and um, and the felt spa tee was it. So it starts off bottom up with this beautiful um, eyelet row and then you have pearl ridges and stockinette and the stockinette section gets wider and wider in between and it's like bottom up, I think it's drop shoulder and then you pick up for a little sleeve and you still add in those details. So it's a perfect type of knitting for me. Just in the round, just basic um, counting that even I can manage. <laughs> just counting rows and it's a wonderfully written pattern. And um, this pattern, just like Hannah, just radiates comfort. So I decided to cast this on instead of another pattern that I had said I would do and I have the yarn ready. But that one starts off with Magic Judy, Judy's Magic Cast On, which I haven't done before. And I also have to figure out how to alternate skeins, which also I haven't done before. But also the way the pattern is done, it's like a v-neck with a feature collar. So I don't know if I alternate skeins in the feature collar because it's right here and visible. Is it going to be, like, is it going to be lumpy? Is the tension going to be off? So... I don't know if I should just knit that part flat with one skein and then alternate skeins when I'm doing it in the round. So all of these things are the reason why I was like, I don't even, I'll just knit something a little bit easier. And then once I'm done with maybe the poetry pullover, I can cast that off. So that's that. The felt spa tee, I'm knitting it in, this is We Are Knitters Cotton in the colorway Olive. 
Now I know Weon Knitters is, is one of those brands, but I've actually never been drawn to the yarn even before and since. But I got this cotton as well as the, the same one in a different colorway in a D stash. So for me, D stashing is like like thrift shopping. Like I would buy, it's like giving second life to stuff. And my money doesn't go to the corporate corporation, which is I guess the whole point of um, why you don't purchase their things because you don't want to support them. Um, so if this pattern is originally knit in Sandness Garn Linne, Lin, Linne, it's a worsted weight cotton, linen, and viscose blend yarn. So any yarn that you can use to substitute for that, you can use for this pattern. This just happened to be what I had enough in stash. Felt party. I love it so far. I only cast this on last night, so I'm really enjoying the process. And then for acquisitions, I actually don't have any. <laughs> Yay. However, my advent calendar that I had ordered from um, Lisa from the 11 Windmills has arrived. <gasps> and I'm being very good and not opening it up. But the theme for her advent calendar this year is cryptids. Which is so exciting. Creatures of myth and folklore completely up my alley uh, maybe I'll show you guys in a little like vlogmas type thing but I'll show you all of the ones that I get um, once the advent is all done okay and then coming up to oh I think I sped through that today um, coming up to my um, I forgot to do the question of the day the last couple of podcasts but I'll do one today so my question of the day um, is, uh, ooh, what was it? Um, how did I end up in Australia? Um, I, I know I don't talk a lot about my personal life on here, especially my partner, he doesn't like to be on this, um, like an open internet forum, which is fair enough. Um, it's not for everybody. And it's, as we know, very <laughs> nerve wracking to put yourself out there. But anyways, I grew up in Nepal. I did most of my schooling in boarding school in India and actually while I was in boarding school in India my parents my dad my stepmom and my baby sister had moved to Australia um, when I was uh, maybe just end of middle school like year seven year eight um, so I finished year 10 in India and they did my year 11 and 12 in Nepal and then I moved to Australia because my parents were already here so it's really not that interesting of an answer um, however Couple of years into, after I got here, like a couple of years into my bachelor's, my parents, like my family, decided to move back. Um, I think they just missed. It's very different here in Australia to Nepal, the community aspect of it. Like uh, even Kathmandu being the biggest city in Nepal, you sort of know everyone. And it's not like that in Sydney. Of course, it's a big, it's a big town, and it's so weird to me how like I don't know any of my neighbors. Whereas back home, like I knew my neighbors, I knew my neighbors' uncles, I knew my neighbors' grandparents. My grandparents knew their grandparents. <laughs> like everyone knows everyone. So I, yeah. So my parents um, decided to move back. Um, they didn't quite enjoy it here, which is fine. It's not for everyone. And my parents were relatively young at the time as well, so they wanted to move back, and they did. So I'm the only one who's here from my immediate family. I have a couple of aunties and uncles and a few cousins that live in Sydney, so I'm not here by myself. But um, yeah, so after I finished uni, I just decided to stay on. And that's it. That's why I'm in Australia. So that's it. That's all for today. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good few weeks until I see you next time. <laughs> Bye.